Hello Adventurers! I figured out the perfect itinerary for first-timers visiting Krabi. I myself had an amazing time testing them out. So, if you want to plan the best trip to Krabi, then this video is for you. This is the big problem in Thailand, you know? Stick to the end because I also have three things that you must know to ensure that your trip goes smoothly without a hitch. Now, let's begin. What makes Krabi so special are these towering limestone casts. And there's a place where you can get so close to them, you can actually touch them. <laughs> Just 40 minutes away from Aonang, you'll find Ao Talin Bay, where a beautiful mangrove forest grows at the foot of a towering karst. The best way to explore Ao Talin Bay is on a kayak. If you've never kayaked before, don't worry, it's super easy. The place where you'll rent the kayak will surely give you some tips. Any beginner can easily pick up and have fun kayaking on their first day, even their first hour. Anyway, the water is super calm and you'll be wearing a buoyancy vest. The worst thing that could happen is if you capsize and you get bit by the crocodiles. <laughs> Just kidding, there aren't any crocs. At least, not that I know of. It was a very special experience cruising along the gnarly mangrove branches under the limestone cliffs. The planting a mangrove seed. Shook. Three months later, it'll grow. Yeah. Three years later, we'll come back and visit our baby mangrove. <laughs> anyway, you can actually just rent a kayak and find your own trail. But I highly recommend getting a guide because the route changes according to the tide level. If you come at a wrong tide, then some areas might be too shallow for you to kayak through. In that case, you might have to get out and carry your kayak. I was actually very grateful that we got a guide because then we could enjoy ourselves without having to stress about navigation. Seriously, if you throw me into a mangrove forest, I look left and right, it's the same. Plus, he helped us to take a lot of photos. So total, we spent 1,700 for the double kayak and 300 for the guide and all that for one hour. If you do longer, the price for the guide is the same. To get here, I recommend arranging your private transport or joining a kayaking tour. We used the ride hailing app called Grab to call a taxi to bring us there for 400 baht. Then we negotiated with the driver to wait for us and bring us back for 450. Why 450? Well, that's because we're also asking him to bring us to the best sunset spot in Krabi. Just 15 minutes away from our kayaking spot, there's a west-facing restaurant atop a hill that's perfect for watching the sunset. To catch this once-in-a-lifetime sunset, get to the Kaltong Hill Resort Restaurant where you'll need to get off your car to buy a ticket from this counter. This ticket will let you in on a shuttle that will bring you up to the restaurant at the top of the hill. Kaltong Hill Sunset. I've seen many sunsets in my life, but this one has got to be the most beautiful. It was 60 baht per person, but it includes 30 baht discount of any items that you want to buy at the restaurant. However, everything in the restaurant was so overpriced, we actually went down empty-handed. But our hearts were full. The most important thing to know if you're coming to Khao Tong Hill is to arrive at least 20 minutes before the sunset timing and earlier if you want to enjoy a longer golden hour. This kayak and sunset combo was easily our best evening in Krabi. If you liked the grand view of the limestone towers, then you will like this next spot even better. There are lots of beautiful islands in Krabi, but the one island that you must visit is Hong Island, and here's why. Almost half of the island is a lagoon, with crystal clear water and very charming rock faces. The entrance to the lagoon is everybody's favourite spot for a photo op. On the other half of the island is a picture-perfect bay with a beautiful beach. The turquoise water is filled with arrays of coral reefs waiting to be explored. <sighs> but it was a shame that I came during bleaching season. I can only imagine how colourful these corals will be in their full glory. And the best part of Hong Island, the super rewarding 360 viewpoint. With just 20 minutes of hiking up this very easy staircase, you get to enjoy this amazing 360 view around Hong Island. 
considering how easy it was to get all the way up. This has got to be the most rewarding hike I've ever done. There's also a nature trail, but we ran out of time to explore it fully. The easiest and the cheapest way to get here is to just join an organized tour to Hong Island. It's also the most convenient because most tours will pick you up at your hotel and provide lunch and snorkeling gear for you at the island. And when everything's done, they will send you back to your hotel. They will likely also bring you to visit the nearby islands. Mine brought me to Lao Lading, which I like a lot because the waters there are even clearer and the corals even more lively. We also went to Pak Bia Island, where there's a very iconic swing. We actually took a picture with the swing, but I think over the years, the swing has sunken down by a lot. <laughs> okay, the most important advice when planning to go to Hong Island is to take the speed boat tour instead of a long tail boat. And this is the loudest reason why. That's the engine of a long tail boat. Although the long tail boats are definitely cheaper, trust me, you want to pay the premium to take a speedboat. Hong Island is quite far offshore, so number one reason to pick a speedboat is speed. By taking a speedboat, you'll save a lot of transfer time, so you can spend more time on the beach, snorkeling or hiking. Secondly, the speedboat is a lot more comfortable. The seats are padded and the sitting area is a lot more sheltered. In comparison, the long tail boats are a bit more exposed, so sometimes you'll still get splashed by the seawater. I just cannot imagine sitting more than half an hour in that very loud environment in discomfort and getting splashed by seawater. Another important point, if you're planning to snorkel, make sure your tour operator provides snorkeling gear for you or bring your own because there are no rental spots on Hong Island. I booked my tour via Klook and you can actually get a discount on any of your Klook bookings if you use my promo code Dashing Heights Klook. I also get commission from your purchase, which helps me to create more video guides like this. And now, a trip to Krabi wouldn't be complete if you haven't tried the local food. Good. In the heart of Krabi town, there is a night market where you can eat like the locals. This place has the best bang for every butt that you spend here. There are many shops in the market giving you plenty of options to choose from. But my favourite is this Thai restaurant called Lan's Lek Lek. We started out by ordering two dishes, but by the end of the night, we ended up with five dishes. And amazingly, it was such an affordable price. The best time to visit is actually on the weekend, because you'll also get to explore the nearby town night market. Just slightly south of Lan's Lek Lek, on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, this whole car park area transforms into a bustling night market. My favourite thing to do at the night market is to buy a lot of things, but all in little bits. Then share it with my wife so that we get to try a lot of things without being too full. There's even a stage where the locals will queue up to show off their performances, such as singing, dancing, even fire breathing. But if you want to see a bigger night market and a more fiery performance, there's another place that you love. Of all the night markets, the Aonang Landmark has the most diverse shops. You can still find the very common shops selling clothes that every other night market also sell. But the real gem are the shops selling their arts and crafts. It's a rubber, rubber bag. Fish flounder. I was so mesmerized by this shop selling soap carvings. They even do it live to show you how it's done. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. There are also very interesting instant sketch artists, which is great if you can sit still for 20 minutes. And if you're lucky, you can also find wood crafts. My wife found this in the night market, but it was in Chiang Mai. Look, it's so damn cute. Wanted, dead or alive. He stole the bananas from Chiang Mai, Thailand. <laughs> they also have the widest food selection that you wouldn't find anywhere else. But the best part about this market is their fire show. Trust me, it's fire.
The fire show runs daily at 9pm and it's actually free to watch. At the end of the show, the performers will take out a donation box where you can put in as much as they entertain you. I highly recommend supporting the fire team with a good donation if you enjoyed the show. In the same way, if you're enjoying this video, please leave a like and thank you for your support. After gobbling down all that mango sticky rice and pad thai, the best way to burn off all that extra calories is to climb the tallest coastal viewpoint in Krabi. Hello! Just 45 minutes drive away from Aonang is the Dragon's Crest Jungle Trail. The cicadas here are so metal. Can you hear that? After two hours of grueling hike, you'll get to see this epic coastal view. In total, we took about one half hours to climb up, one hour, 30 minutes to get down. It was quite a challenging hike, but I think just give yourself more time to prepare and bring at least one liter of water per person, and I think you'll do fine. Anyway, if you are later than 2 o'clock, you will not be able to start the hike. Upon reaching the trailhead, look out for the ranger's booth where you need to pay 200 baht per person to enter the trail. And for safety reasons, you have to lock in your particulars before you start climbing. This is so that they know to look for you if you're not back here by the time they're closing. And maybe for them to know who to call to collect your body. Transport was a challenge. I took a one-way grab for 230 baht, but there was no internet at the park. So we had to wait for a passing tuk-tuk that charged us 450 to bring us back. <laughs> it was the most eccentric tuk-tuk ride I've ever taken in my life. There's also this legendary beach that you must visit while in Krabi. Really beach. It's actually connected to the mainland, but it's only accessible by boat. It's super easy to get a long tail boat to bring you from Auna to Rayleigh. And these are my top things to do in Rayleigh for an amazing day trip. I was already so amazed while I was on the boat to Rayleigh. The enormous limestone cliffs just got bigger and bigger as we approached Rayleigh. If you're into climbing, Rayleigh Beach is one of the most popular spots for natural wall rock climbing. There is also a big exposed limestone cave formation in East Rayleigh where you can explore thousand years old stalagmites and stalactites. And the beaches in Rayleigh, which are definitely more scenic and quieter compared to those in the mainland. And this is the legendary cave. Oh. And there were so many fun adventure spots, which unfortunately I didn't get to do because I only planned for a half day trip. Don't make the same mistakes that I did because you could be enjoying the East Rayleigh Viewpoint hike. This is a pretty steep hike that will bring you to a high vantage point of Rayleigh. I read that there's also a hidden lagoon at the top. In the extreme end of Pranang Beach, there's also the Bat Cave, where you can explore the limestone cave system and actually climb up into that bat hole. And the Diamond Cave, which is another limestone cave with interiors that you can explore. If I had more time, I would have done the East Viewpoint hike and the Bat Cave, because I think those two are the most unique to Rayleigh. You can easily buy a ticket for a long tail boat to bring you to Rayleigh at this ticketing booth right beside Aonang Beach. You'll need to wait until they have eight people and they might take you in a van to an off-site dock area. Totally they sell single trip or return tickets, but since they cost the same, personally, I just go to the boat landing area and find a captain that will take cash. Up until the official last boat timing at 5 p.m., it costs 100 baht to return to Aona. After 6 p.m., there will still be boats, but they will charge you extra. You also cannot visit Thailand without watching their national sport live Muay Thai boxing. First time in the live Muay Thai stadium. How do you feel? It was so cool and scary at the same time. You 
you can almost feel every punch that landed. It was also very heartwarming to see the winners always bowing down to their competitor after winning. Don't be alarmed if you see young children fighting in the ring. That's because as a national sport, a lot of Thais start honing their Muay Thai skills at a very young age. So there are two boxing stadiums nearby the Aonang area. The Aonang Stadium, which is near the landmark area where we had the fire show, and the Krabi International Stadium, which is nearer to the Krabi town site. The Krabi Stadium is bigger and they field international fighters. So I think they might be more exciting to watch. There are three types of seats you can choose from. The grandstand, the ringside, or the VIP. Honestly, I think the grandstand is good enough. The most important advice when trying to catch a Muay Thai boxing show is to actually check the fight schedule. <sighs> One time, my wife and I actually just turned up at the stadium and it was empty because there were no fights scheduled for that day. The best way to check for the fight schedule is to find their promotional flyers. Each stadium has their own websites. Alternatively, there's also this very annoying promoter truck that keeps repeating, Tonight, tonight. 9 p.m. El Nang, Landmark Boxing Stadium. Okay, it's very annoying because it keeps repeating the same thing over and over again on a loudspeaker. And now, here are the three things that you must know so that your trip goes smoothly without a hitch. Number one, in Krabi, cash is king. In the week that I was there, there weren't many places that accept cart as a form of payment. So make sure to bring enough cash to cover your whole itinerary. Very often, those that accept card payment will incur extra service charge. To get extra cash, bring your own currency to change into Thai baht. But take note to bring the bigger denomination notes because the rates are higher for the bigger notes. You can also find international bank ATMs where you can get extra Thai baht, but the rates are just terrible. And the ATM will also charge a flat fee per transaction. So it's really not worth it if you're only withdrawing small amounts of cash from the ATM. Number two, if you don't speak Thai, you might have a problem communicating with the locals. From the week that I was there, English is very limited in most of the locals. So install Google Translate on your phone and download the Thai language pack so that your language skills will not be bound by your Wi-Fi signals. Actually, my biggest pain about language is when I'm trying to take a local taxi. If the driver doesn't speak English well enough, I don't know how to tell him where I'm going. Can you imagine? The addresses are all in Thai language. If he doesn't know how to read English, I don't know where he'll bring me. <laughs> That's why I highly prefer using this ride-hailing app called Grab because I can just input my current location and my destination, after which a car will come, pick me up, bring me to where I want to go, all without having to say a single word. Which brings us to the third point. Beware of the taxi mafias. So one night, my wife and I, we were trying to get a taxi back to our hotel. But then, my Grab driver messaged me. Hi, I cannot pick you up there. Can you walk to the 7-Eleven in front? At first I thought, why not? You're just there. Why can't you just stop and let me on? And then he replied some more, saying that the local taxis will not let him pick me up at where I was. As it turns out, there's an ongoing conflict between the Grab drivers and the local taxi drivers in Krabi and clueless tourists like me were just caught in the middle of it. Sometimes the fighting, eh? Ah, sometimes the fighting. Because no, you cannot come to this area, you cannot come, the crab cannot come to this area. But mm. if they fight, the tourists lose out. Yeah. Many cases. Mm. That's why, if you're calling a grab, you might need to walk a little bit down the road outside of the local taxi territory to avoid any potential confrontation between your driver and the local taxis. <sighs> It's really a shame that this is a concern at all. I really hoped that they find a resolution to this because it's a very unnecessary pain for visitors like us. Do you want to explore more of Asia with me? Check out my other travel guides over here. I'll see you there. Oh.